So I have a guy coming on this 69 L89, super rare car and very interesting car. And when you look at the hierarchy from L88s, L89s and the big dog is the L1, you can see how the prices vary from one to another. So what makes an L89 so special? Well, it's really the aluminum heads. The engine package starts out as an L71, which is a great motor package. I mean, you got a steel crank, four bolt mains, you got some decent compression in it, you got a tri-power on top, a nice solid lifter cam, 435 horsepower. The aluminum heads don't really add any extra horsepower, but they make the package lighter, they make it flow better. Maybe it adds a little bit of extra horsepower, but all in all, it's basically an L71 with an aluminum head package. So compare that to an L88. We just happen to have one here. Another great car, super low mileage factory black car. So the big difference, obviously, is the engine again. So here you have still a four bolt main block, steel block, you've got steel crank and rods, bigger rods, you got big compression, you got a 12 and a half piston, you needed to run this on race fuel, this really was a race engine. You've got a big lumpy camshaft compared to the L71 motor, and instead of having a tri-power, you've actually got a single four with an 850 on top that actually works better. Tri-powers, let's face it, they look cool, they work great when they're tuned properly, but for a race car guy, nothing beats a single four other than if you go to a, a modern fuel injection system. So you've got big horsepower, 550 horsepower, even though they're rated at 430, this was the big dog. Well, actually it wasn't really the big dog. The really big dog was the ZL1. Let's have a look at that. I'm just kidding about the ZL1. They only built two of those. Those were an all aluminum block heads, full on race piece, two built. Now the difference in values today is huge. And the difference in pricing back then, it was fairly big too. So back in the day in 1969, if you went into the GM dealership and you were gonna decide which aluminum head version to tick off, the L89, the L88, or the ZL1 with the all aluminum motor, including the heads, this one was gonna cost you $830. Pretty good value. The L88 was gonna cost you about $1,030, which was another couple hundred dollars. The ZL1 was gonna cost you $4,000 extra, quadruple the engine price of an L88. So then let's look at values today. The interesting thing is we have this car for sale and we have the L88 for sale. This car is high 200s and it is one of the best cars, 300 original miles, stunning paperwork, ground up restoration. I'll go into more detail about this car in a little bit. The black L88 that we have, a couple thousand mile car, has won everything on the planet, Bloomington Gold, Triple Crown, just has won everything it could win, one of the best L88s in black. That car is six and a quarter. But if you had a ZL1, like I said, I was kidding, we don't have one here. But if you had a ZL1 today, my guesstimate would be that car is probably three to four million dollar car. And I don't think one has traded hands in the last 30 years, maybe longer. So that car is the top dog, two in the world. Might be next to the Grand Sports, the most expensive Corvette on the planet. As you can see, stunning restoration, ground up restoration, the original colors, the yellow with the black, beautifully restored car, still on its original tires, original interior, and a stupid low mileage car. We'll go over that in a second. Car's clean enough, it's great for a customer that's ready to uh, have a look at it. I just wanna make sure it fires up. Nothing worse than a dead battery when a customer's looking at a car. Well, that's a pleasant surprise, one firing up right away without a dead battery. That's nice. Now, the best part of this car is the story. And it's almost unbelievable if you didn't see all the paperwork or talk to the original owner. It is a legitimate 359 mile car. Why would a 359 mile car be fully restored other than the interior and the tires? So we called up the original owner after we'd bought the car 
And we talked to him and said, why would you restore this car? And he says, well, I restored the car. And I said, why would it need restoring with 300 miles? He says, well, I bought the car brand new. I did a goofy metallic flake paint job on it. I put a set of Kregers on it. I turned it into a show car. I never used the car. The intention was it was going to be a show car, drag car. I never really did anything with the car. Then fast forward 30, 40 years later, I decided I was going to restore the car. So he's documented all the photographs. He's documented everything that he's done with the car. But the really best part is when he bought this car, he kept every stitch of paper. And you have to see the paperwork. The paperwork is absolutely stunning. So lay it out for the customer coming. The guy's going 352 miles, so we put a couple miles on it. Car had never been titled. And then here's a list of the original documentation. A lot of this stuff, Corbett guys have never seen it. Then you have the original State of Florida Department of Motor Vehicles uh, temporary tag, original window sticker, the letter from John DeLorean, the receipt, the order form, the protecto plate, the original retail buyer's order form, the original car invoice, the price schedule sheet, the original tank sheet, the car shipper information, the Corvette order form, like it just goes on and on and on. Then it's also got the microfiche from back in the day. Then it's got the shipping data report from NCRS. It's got the whole story about the car written out. The L89 registry stuff, the top flight award, the judging sheets. And then it's also got photos of the restoration happening. So when you look at the combination of, I would say it's probably the most documented L89 on, in in the world, I, I don't think there could be a better documented one. It's probably the lowest mileage one, and I don't know that for sure, but I'm guessing. And then it's had a stunning restoration. I would put it in the top two or three L89s on the planet. Car runs and drives beautifully. It's got a great story. If somebody wanted the best L89, this is gonna be one of the top ones. From a value point of view, let's face it, Almost $300,000 is not cheap, but $625,000 for a great L88, or who knows how much for a ZL1. Three million, four million. I don't even know what you'd have to pay to actually pry one loose from one of the guys. Bottom line is, great car. Hopefully the guy buys it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to drop a like and a comment now to help our channel get seen. Hit subscribe and check out our other videos for more legendary motor cars.